Underwater navigation. It's not glamorous, but it's fundamental to almost every dive. You learn the basics in the PADI Open Water Diver course. Now you'll improve your navigation for better accuracy that you can apply in wider circumstances. You'll want to master navigation because it has at least five benefits. One, it reduces anxiety and confusion because you know where you're going. Two, it avoids long surface swims. Swimming underwater is less tiring and more interesting. Three, it makes dive plans more effective by reducing the guesswork about how much time and gas you need. Four, it helps avoid buddy separation because you agree upon where you're going and how to get there. Five, effective navigation conserves gas because it saves time, increases your confidence, and helps you relax. And it's fun because it's a rewarding challenge. For example, navigating 100 meters, 300 feet, to a particular spot isn't necessarily easy. But with training and experience, you can learn to do it repeatedly and reliably. To navigate, you only need to know which way you're going and how far. Starting with the latter, we'll look at three distance estimation techniques. You'll learn more in the PADI Underwater Navigation course. One of the most convenient ways to measure distance is counting kick cycles. A kick cycle is the distance you cover in one complete fin stroke. Just count each time that leg returns to the same position. The distance you travel in one kick cycle is usually consistent when swimming at your normal, relaxed pace. You can also gauge distance underwater by elapsed time. For example, if you know it takes you 30 seconds to swim about 30 meters, 100 feet, you can gauge distance by timing your swim. As with kick cycles, swim at your normal, relaxed pace. The primary disadvantage compared to kick cycles is that if you stop or pause, you can throw off the measurements. Because gas use is relatively uniform at about the same depth and activity level, you can measure distance based on your SPG. For example, to navigate a square, you could swim until you've used 15 bar, 200 psi, turn 90 degrees, and swim for another 15 bar, 200 psi, and so on. While you only get a precise measurement at a relatively level depth, you can use this method over changing depths when following a course you plan to return on. This works because the outbound and inbound depth changes tend to cancel each other out, making pressure used a useful distance measure. Natural navigation is navigation based on what you observe in the environment, like following patterns in the sand, the slope of a reef, or swimming against a current. Any dive site has small details and environmental features that tell you where you are. You'll learn to use these references with and without your compass. Natural navigation begins before you dive because you can usually tell a great deal about what you'll find underwater and use it to determine where you are. The direction of waves, currents, and tides can change, but usually remains consistent over a dive so you can orient yourself relative to the flow. Check where the sun is in relation to your planned travel direction and where shadows fall. Even in turbid water, you can usually use these to help orient yourself. Note objects and formations, like piers, kelp beds, buoys, and so on, so you know where you are when you find them underwater. In clear water, you may see 